guys, welcome back to a very special video as today, finally marks the day, I feel quite confident to give you a tour of the games room. So to me the games room is always kind of something that is changing and evolving over time, but I'm quite happy with how it is at the moment. So I've got a few, few little bits I want to do to start off, so we're going to jump into that and we're going to go for a full view of the games room in 2021. First of all, a little behind the scenes secret. Basically, everyone's games room is probably an absolute state. That is why you put the camera at these strategic points so you don't see all the clutter in the room. But that is going to change today. We are going to organise this room and make it look amazing. As you can see here, we have some new shelves which are going to go above the TV. This should give me some much needed extra storage space for the larger items such as the boxed consoles and the kind of large collector's editions and really clear up a little bit more floor space. You can see here on top of the shelves, I've already started to put some bits across the top here and I'm going to use this space here, kind of take the shelves across and over the TV so I can carry on this storage solution. It's just a really nice way to store things off the floor so you can see them all nicely displayed. You can see here, it has got to quite a state, but don't worry, by the end of this video, this place is going to be a totally different kind of beast and it is going to look incredible. But this is the problem with collecting stuff, it all has to go somewhere and it's all about storage solutions. Main plans is also to clear this shelf of pops. I really don't even know how I got so many of these, but I think I've got a really good solution for storing these and displaying them in a much better fashion. We have the TV unit and basically the plan is, is to go across the top of this with shelves. I actually have quite a small room so the main concern is always storage. So as you can see here I've put in some long shelves across the top so I've kind of made myself a big multimedia unit. Adding in these shelves can be some really good storage place. So I've got two long IKEA shelves and because of the size of the room I've put three smaller shelves on the side of the wall. It just really is maximising the space and this way I can squeeze in as much video game awesomeness as possible. All the new shelves are up and it is time to organise this room. It has taken me quite a while to get to this point. There was a lot of clutter, there was a lot of stuff to find homes for but it is done. The place is clear and it is finally time to give you a tour of the game room. So let's jump straight in. I hope you enjoy it. Let's go. We'll start off with a quick walk through the room just so you can kind of see the space in its entirety. So here you can see the main event that is the two televisions with all the consoles underneath and those shelves are full already up there. I'm going to go through everything a bit closer later on but first we'll just have a route round so you can see that shelf is a lot more organised and that other shelf is totally full as well. Down here in the corner behind the door is where I have a lot of my cartridge games and I have kind of my glass display case which has some of my more say valuable or just really favourite games. Then we have the wall of media. I'm going to go through all the shelves, explain what's in each one but you can see sadly there is still a bit of a pile in that corner. We'll get this out of the way straight away. This is the only part of the room I'm not really happy with at the moment. That's because it's still quite cluttered. I don't know if you can see, but on the left hand side there, there is a storage cupboard, but that really needs organising. And hopefully these bits will fit in there. It's just some of the bigger collector's editions which really take up the space. If you watched my previous video about collector's editions, you'll know how big some of these really are. On the back shelf there, you can see I have my DOS PC, which I use to run a lot of retro games, which is a really cool unit. And at the moment that is sitting on a set of drawers. So I'm hoping to upgrade these drawers as that is where I store all of my controllers. But because they've taken up a lot of space, I'm needing a much bigger set of drawers, but they will hopefully come soon enough. Also, I have quite a problem with guitars, but I have thought of a solution for that. I think a lot of people just got rid of all their rock band, their guitar and stuff, just because it takes so much space. But I have got a plan for that, so I'll come back to that later in the video. Due to the shape of the room, one of the hardest areas of the room to utilise was behind the door. But I managed to get this really small kind of unit, which I think was in a garage used to store screws and stuff like that. But it perfectly works for my cartridge only games. So in here I have N64 games, NES and SNES games, as well as a few other loose games. This was a really cool way to store them and it kind of used for what would have been, if not wasted space. So as I pan up, you can see this is why I stored some of my bigger controllers such as my Thrustmaster arcade stick and my Guitar Hero drum kit. But what we have is some space above the door here, sorry, just beside the door, 
on the wall, which is where I'm planning to store my guitars. So what I'm gonna do is I've got some clips that would normally hold, you know, standard actual guitars. I'm gonna wall mount these and then mount the guitars on there. They're gonna look really cool and also have another storage solution for my Guitar Hero stuff. Next up, we're gonna go through my glass display case. So it has four levels and each one has a little bit of a theme following some of my favorite games. So the top shelf is all about Gears of War. So you can see there we've got the statue from the Gears of War Free Collector's Edition. There's a couple of sealed games at the back as well as some pops and some mini pops. It's shelf number two and it is all about Nintendo and especially Mario. So you can see pride and center at the middle is the Virtual Boy. So this is a console I didn't want to have stacked on a shelf or collecting any dust. It is safe and secure in there. In the back, we have the Game & Watch color screen version I did of Mario last year, as well as a couple of really nicely boxed SNES games. So we have a box Super Mario All-Stars and a Super Mario Kart. The Zelda is actually a repro, but on the side there as well, we have one of my favorite games, Mario Kart Super Circuit, as well as loads of little Mario figures. Next shelf down, and we have the Fallout Shrine. Once again, we got some vinyl pops now. We've got lots of bobbleheads. We've got the Pit Boy from Fallout 4. I really just love the little Vault Boy. I think it's one of the best mascots for any game. And you know, I just love Fallout. So it just is a really nice display piece up in this shelf. Finally, the bottom shelf is all about PlayStation. So in the center there is my PlayStation 3 test console. And in the background, we have some of the PlayStation 4 Collector's Edition. Some of these games have gone absolutely through the roof. But yeah, I'll go deeper into them in another video, but they are some of my favorite editions and they look super cool. You have the first of many bookshelves. So you can see these are literally stacked up to the ceiling and they are also stacked deep. The thing is, for I have to have storage solutions for all my stuff. So I've kind of put the stuff near the front. I'm a bit prouder of you and see like the Pokemon DS there and the copy of The Witcher with the Gwent cards. One of the things you will see is these Lego clocks as I really like them. Also here I have my shelf, a very small collection of VHS tapes. I'm still not really decided on them if I'm gonna keep collecting or just stay there or even get rid of the whole thing altogether. Next to that is another full-size IKEA Billy. You can see it's literally stacked again, literally to the ceiling. You've got the Guitar Hero Series 1 figures on top. And this is mainly where I keep my strategy guides as well as, of course, you're gonna see this is another theme, Jurassic Park toys. <laughs> One of my main passions in toy collecting. So we've got a lot of the hardback strategy guides here. Kind of on the next shelf down, some more hardback ones. Then we kind of go into the paperback guides at the bottom and some box N64 games. This is literally stacked to the floor, even though it is behind the sofa. These shelves have been there quite a while and haven't really changed that much. They've still got the very similar kind of pops and Disney Infinity stuff and some of the collector's editions. So this is my main Disney Infinity shelf and it is absolutely rammed. I know I will stop at some point, probably when I get all the Star Wars and Marvel characters for Disney Infinity. Coming down, we're starting to go onto a bit of a crossover. So one of the main things my wife collects is these Pokemon lunch boxes. So the plan is there is quite a few of them in this room, but we're gonna be putting another shelf underneath here when it gets delivered from Ikea, just because this entire room is all about storage solution. And then she can finally have one shelf that is just hers for all her Pokemon lunch boxes. We have the first of three Ikea Billy bookshelves. You can see they're stacked to the ceiling with collects editions and they go down onto my original Xbox collection. So sadly, these are actually done too deep, which is a bit of a shame, but I had to find storage solutions for the game somehow and there is a lot of them. As the original Xbox was one of the consoles I really got into collecting for when I started collecting again. It was just so cheap to flesh out the collection and there is so many good titles to be had. So this first shelf is all about the Xbox, so it goes down here from the original Xbox to the 360, which I had a lot of games for already. It was a console I bought a lot of games for at launch, and I really got back into gaming with that console. So there's a bit of a crossover here as the shelves are filling up. There's some PlayStation 2 and original Xbox here. I do try and keep them all separated, but you know, there's going to be overflow somewhere. And it goes all the way down to the floor with the most recent Xbox One game. So that is bookshelf one of three, on to the next. Shelf number two is all about the PlayStation. So it's once again, there's collector's editions on top and it starts off with the OG, the PlayStation 1 and also some Minecraft logo, because why not? As you can see on the right here, we've got some PlayStation 1 demos because they were amazing back in the day and they're a really cool thing to collect. You can go back and just play little bits of games. I really think that was the kind of a defining thing of the PlayStation 1 was the demo discs. 
Again, these are stacked two back just for storage. And then we go on to the PlayStation 2, which have the most boring spines of all time. So I think I do want to kind of break down the PlayStation 2 collection a little bit at some point, take away a lot of the sports games, and they're just not very exciting to look at. So this shelf isn't arranged in the best way. As you can see here, there's some PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 kind of mingling into the PlayStation 2 as the 2 is boring to display. Then it goes down into PlayStation 3, which frankly are more interesting to look at. So we have a few shelves there. Going all the way down onto the floor with one of my most recently added two collections, the PlayStation 4. So it was my main console this gen and is a nice fat set. And final shelf is a bit of a mishmash, but it does have the incredible Donkey Kong cookie jar on the top, so that helps. So on the top shelf, we're starting a bit of a Sega collection. So we've got the Mars System and the Mega Drive. I really wanted to have like a designated Mars System shelf, but my Mega Drive collection it is one of my favourite ones to have on the shelf. Just kind of starting to go onto that shelf as well. They just look cool, Mega Drive games. Coming down from there, we have GameCube. This is why I mean it's a bit of a mess. It is not very ordered. But there's a good GameCube selection there, as well as some Pokemon cards and Pogs. Next up, this shelf is a real hindrance. You can see there is Switch games, Hiding Dreamcast, and Saturn games. I really think eventually I'm going to have to have a designated Switch shelf, as it is quickly becoming one of my favourites to collect for. Going down from there, we have the huge Wii collection, which again is a one I am tempted to kind of break down a little to get rid of some of the shovelware to make more space for my Wii U collection, which I really love. Also, here we have handhelds. I'm not really sure where to store them at the moment. Stalking off handhelds, we are going down onto the Game Boy DS and Game Boy Advance games. There, once again, stacked. It's a bit of a mess at the moment. Going down onto the PlayStation Vita and PSP selection, which is criminally underrated. And is one I think is going to get worse and worse to collect for in years to come. So grab them now. The main event, and that is the two TVs. And there is one 4K and one CRT to cover retro and modern. But how awesome do these shelves look above? That is what I call maximising your space because every inch matters when you are looking for storage and I have not wasted a tiny bit. This is the main storage now above the TVs. You can see there's box consoles up there as well as all the vinyl pops are fitted in nicely on that smaller shelf along with a load of vintage toys. We've got Jurassic Park toys, Team Fortress figures. We've got everything. We've got box consoles, collector's editions, those really cool Paper Mario standees that were a shop display when the game was released back on the GameCube. We've got a little bit of everything. We've got more Lego, some Wii stuff, some Game Boy Advance stuff, even some more boxed consoles. It goes along to the kind of Pokemon bit where it's starting up. You can see there's a shelf below where there is some lunch boxes. As I said earlier, I'm going to have a designated shelf for them. And kind of the useful thing about the CRT TV is having the space on top to store consoles. So once again, there's some more Lego clocks and lights here, but also the original mask system, as that thing is a pain to fit into anywhere else. But I kind of like the retro aesthetic. I think that's literally how I played it back in the day, with a console on top of a big old CRT TV. So this is what it's all about right here. This is the view from the sofa where I do my gaming from. So we have a 65 inch 4K Ambilight TV here, which does cast some awesome light on the back, especially being caught with the shelves. You can see we've got the PlayStation stuff there. We have the VR and the camera for the Xbox, as well as the Switch and a changer for the CRT TV. The cool thing about being here, you can actually have one person on a 65 inch TV and one on a CRT TV. And that for me is the perfect night in with friends. So all that is held up with the Calyxes, of course. They have glass shelves and all the consoles are always plugged in. This is something I want to reiterate. The consoles are there to play. So they are all plugged in, ready to go at a moment's notice. Literally, if you've seen my videos before when I was building my games room, I have the splitter here so I can press one button to join any console I want. This is what it's all about, guys. Having your consoles plugged in, ready to go at a moment's notice. You can get that game on. There we have it then guys, that has been my crib you have seen around the games room. It's kind of hard to show it in its entirety because it is a weird shaped room, but I think I've really maximised the space I do have and it really is a little slice of heaven in the world. Especially with all the stuff going on in the world in a minute, it's great to just come in here, shut the curtains and leave the world behind and be in a world of pure imagination. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe for more gaming content and I'll probably be back next year with another gaming room update video. As I said at the start, this room is constantly changing and evolving just so I can get as much stuff into my collection as possible while still being able to move. 
So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, seeing behind the scenes what the game room is like. So as always, thanks for watching and keep playing the game.